Welcome back to the Lincoln Journal Star Prep Extra Preview video. We've got week two of the postseason here, and you don't have to wait until Friday for a little playoff football, Ron. What do we got uh, starting tomorrow? No, the eight-man second round, which is the round of 16, is Wednesday. Um, we lost BDS last week in the first round. Number one ranked uh, in Class D1, uh, the defending D2 champions. They had a 21-game winning streak, and Osceola High Plains uh, – Knocked them off. And was, was there an injury before that for BDS? Or uh, obviously that was a bit of a surprise, them going in and right. losing that game. Yeah, two-time All-Stater John Christensen, very physical linebacker and their quarterback. He was out with a knee injury and it turned out to be an ACL, right. which is very unfortunate because it looks like he'll miss basketball season as well. Absolutely. And then now with, with them out, you kind of have an open field there in D1? Well, or? yeah. Um, you know, Creighton is second ranked and you know, they're looking very good. Lutheran High Northeast, who now plays um, uh, Osceola High Plains, is going to be a – I think they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs as well. Absolutely. Then up to Class A, every game in those quarterfinals are on Friday. And last week we had five Lincoln teams uh, in Class A, and now we only have one left. Yeah, Southeast beat Southwest 14-10. Uh, to 10, right. Very low-scoring game. They lost their starting quarterback, Jampy Gergen, to – uh, knee injury in the first quarter. Their JV quarterback comes in, Colby Daffer, throws two touchdown passes to Michael Anderson. One of them's uh, what, 88 yards, I right. believe. Um, and their defense holds off Southwest. And that was about the defense, obviously, because when starting quarterback goes out, it kind of looked like South Southwest was going to be the team there to kind of move forward. But when you look at the rest of those Lincoln teams, Obviously, uh, Lincoln High was one that you kind of thought going into the postseason they were going to be able to make a run behind center case. They were playing extremely well on both sides of the ball. That Southwest game was about as complete a game as they could put together. And let's face it, Elkhorn South has a lot of experience in the playoffs. Granted, it's been Class B, but they would have been very competitive in Class A the last few years. And obviously, they were not afraid of the big stage. And they came up with a great defensive plan to hold Lincoln High to 24 points. Absolutely. And then when you look at the lone team advancing, Lincoln Southeast, things get extremely tough this Friday night. Yeah, they've got Omaha Burke. They've been the consensus number one team all season. Uh, two Nebraska recruits. Don't know about Nick Henrich. He's missed the last few weeks with a knee injury. Uh, Chris Hickman, you know, great tight end, great defensive end. They have an outstanding wide receiver, Xavier Watts. Right. He's a junior. He's been offered by Nebraska now as a scholarship. So, you know, they've got a lot of weapons. Their quarterback, you know, he's very capable of carving you up uh, in the passing game. They have a 1,600-yard rusher in James Burks. Right. You know, they've, <laughs> they've got a lot of bases covered. So then, if, if that's kind of Class A, obviously Omaha Burke's still looking like the favorite there. If you want to go quick hits, Class B, Class C1, what are you looking at uh, going into round two? Well, there's two games in Class B that are very, uh, very intriguing. Of course, York and Seward. Right. I mean, that was an instant classic <laughs> yeah. back, back, uh, uh, you know, earlier in October. Um, you know, I don't know how York was able to pull that off at the end, but they did. And, you know, Garrett Snodgrass was playing with a sprained ankle that game. So some amazing performances in that game. It'll be interesting to see if the rematch can match the drama. They typically don't, but now that you're in the second round of the playoffs, you have to hope, you know, for everyone's sake, that it does live up to the hype uh, from that first meeting. Going to be a little different playing at York this time. Right. You know, the first game was at Seward at Concordia on turf so I don't know how that's going to change the dynamics of the game but uh, obviously Seward once passed the ball with Joseph Krause and you know all those uh, receivers and I think I think York would like to probably balance it out I think they would also like to control the ball and Absolutely. keep it away from Seward's uh, offense. Absolutely so what's the other game you look at? In the, the other game is uh, Waverly and McCook. Right. Um, you know, Waverly's lost to Seward in a very close game. They were pretty competitive with Omaha Scut. Now they're going to get their uh, third chance at a team that's, uh, you know, kind of a blue butt, blood program in McCook. Interesting about these two teams, they both love to run the ball. Right. And they just love to line up and go straight at you. So it'll be interesting to see, 
you know, who ends up winning that matchup. And you had a story in today's paper on Waverly looking for that rematch because they lost to McCook last year in the first round of the playoffs as well, correct? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So that that's definitely another intriguing matchup for them to show how far they've come. What about C1, quick hit right here? Well, you know, um, looking at the matchups, obviously Ashley Greenwood got past Lincoln Lutheran, yeah. avenged a loss to Lutheran in the last game of the regular season. Now they have Ord. Ord's really the only team that's given Pierce a, a relatively close game this right. season. And of course, Pierce is coming to town, uh, coming into this area. They're playing uh, Bishop Newman right. uh, at Newman, and then Wahoo is at home as well. So there's two playoff games in Wahoo on Friday night. Wahoo will be uh, meeting Adams Central. And obviously, both Wahoo and Pierce have looked excellent all, all, all season. So um, last class here, what do you got, C2? Well, you know, um, Sutton Aquinas, yeah. what a matchup. Yeah. You know, there's there's two more teams that are going to line up and go at each other. Aquinas has played a rugged schedule, and they've gotten better and better and better as the season's gone on. And this is one of those matchups that, you know, both of these teams played Centennial. Right. And, you, and when they played Centennial, you wish, God, I wish I could see Aquinas actually play Sutton too. Right. And now we're getting the chance. And, you know, the winner of this game was – Probably going to face Norfolk Catholic, who, by the way, scored 77 points in their first round game. And I think uh, Dylan Cotts was around 350 yards rushing. Jeez. So obviously they're starting to hit on all cylinders. On the other side of the bracket, we got Wilbur Claytonia going to Elkley Craig. Right. And Wilbur Claytonia is another one of these teams. They're young and they've gotten better and better as the season's gone on. They won a shootout against North Bend Central 47 39. Right. And then, of course, uh, we got Centennial, you know, at the, top, at the top of the bracket. Undefeated, <laughs> yes. And uh, they have uh, BRLD, who scored 56 in their first round game. A lot of offense in this postseason. You kind of think that it's going to shift over to some defense like that Lincoln Southwest Southeast game, but some of these teams can still score the ball. Well, you know, you got to wait for the weather to turn. And it looks like the weather's going to be pretty good on Friday night. Yeah. So that may favor the offense over the defense. Absolutely. Well, you got anything else? Otherwise, that's, that's it for me. No, uh, let's just uh, go out and watch some games uh, Wednesday and Friday. Absolutely. You guys have a great day. For Ron Paul, I'm Alec McChesney.